Hello everybody and welcome to the beginning of chapter 8. In chapter 8 we're going to talk about bonding. So our first video let's talk about the different types of chemical bonds. Chemical bonds will form when individual atoms become attached to other atoms. This happens when the electrons in each atom's outer energy level become filled. The whole purpose of bonding is to create a stable octet in the outer energy level. An octet is 8, so a stable octet means that the outer energy level has 8 electrons in it. Here we have two elements, sodium and chlorine. Sodium's electron configuration ends in 3s1, meaning that in its outer energy level it has one electron. Chlorine's electron configuration ends in 3s2, 3p5, indicating an outer energy level filled with seven electrons. So what must happen for sodium and chlorine to become stable? Well, sodium must lose one electron and chlorine must gain one electron. Here are their electron configurations again. Sodium is going to lose its 3s1 electron and chlorine is going to gain a 3p electron. What ends up happening here is sodium's 3s1 electron moves over to chlorine's 3p orbital. Now, if you take a look here, what you end up seeing is that sodium ends up with a plus one charge in an outer electron configuration of 2s2, 2p6. This is eight electrons in its outermost energy level. Chlorine is a negative one ion now, and its outermost energy level is 3s2, 3p6, which is eight electrons in the outer energy level. They both now have stable octets in their outermost energy levels. This transfer of an electron from sodium to chlorine is how a chemical bond is formed. The interaction between atoms which lead to bond formation are all centered around the electrons in incomplete subshells and incomplete outer shells, the valence electrons. So all bonding will deal with the outermost energy level which is where the valence electrons are found. The atoms of the elements lose, gain, or share these electrons to achieve, where possible, the noble gas configurations. And we've seen the noble gas configurations in chapter six, but that's their whole goal is to have a final electron configuration that matches the noble gases. For the main group electrons, the S and P block, uh, the electrons available for bonding, the valence electrons, are the outer shell S and P electrons. Like we saw with sodium, it had a 3s1, that was its outermost energy level. In forming compounds, only these electrons, the valence electrons, will be used, and they can be used in one of two ways. They may be transferred to form ions, so that incomplete subshells are completed or removed, or they may be shared so that two atoms together have complete subshells. Two different ways that electrons are moved around to form stable octets. These will be two different bonds that form, and we'll talk about what they are in a minute. For the transition metals, though, the valence electrons will include the S electrons from their outermost shell, and also electrons from their inner incomplete D shell. This is why the transition metals can have various oxidation numbers or various charges because not only are they going to involve their S electrons, but they're also going to be able to use some of their D subshell electrons to form bonds. The periodic table column number of the main group and tra transition metals give the sum of valence electrons for each element in the family. Note that the column number indicates the maximum positive charge or oxidation state these metals can achieve in a compound through loss of electrons in a chemical reaction. All this is saying is those group one electrons, the alkali metals, they will have a plus one charge. So their group number will match what, ch what charge they have and that indicates the number of electrons they'll lose. There are three basic types of chemical bonds. We have ionic, covalent, and metallic. An ionic bond is formed by the complete transfer of one or more electrons from a metal to a nonmetal. So ionic bonds will be between a metal and a nonmetal. 
A covalent bond is formed by the complete sharing of electrons. A covalent bond will form between two non-metal elements. And then a metallic bond is found in metals where bonding electrons are free to move throughout the 3D structure and they create the sea of electrons. This is why metals can conduct electricity because the ability for these electrons to move throughout. Here's a picture of the three different types of bonds. First we have our ionic bond and you'll see here the electron is physically being transferred from one element to another and when that happens we create these ions. With covalent bonding we are going to see that there is actually a sharing of electrons between the two elements. So here you're going to see a sharing and each of these covalent bonds here will have a sharing of electrons between the two elements. And then over here you can notice that this is a block of sodium with sodium atoms all the way throughout and with these sodium atoms you're going to notice they're going to have these electrons in the outermost energy level and each of these atoms have these electrons and because they are atoms of the same metal these electrons are able to kind of move throughout the entire metal and this allows electricity to pass through. What's important for you to recognize is that metallic bonding is not really bonding between two different substances. Metallic bonding is what occurs in a solid metal substance. So yes, it is a type of bonding uh, in terms of how electrons are able to pass through, but it doesn't necessarily need to occur between two different atoms. It occurs between the atoms of the same element with metallic bonding. With ionic bonding, atoms will lose or gain electrons to achieve a noble gas configuration, and this is typically an exothermic reaction. The bonded state is lower in energy, therefore it's more stable. And when we use, um, when we start drawing the Lewis structure for ions, we're going to make sure we use brackets. So exothermic, right here, if you remember from chem, exothermic means it gives off heat, so the heat leaves the reaction. This right here, the bonded state is lower in energy. That is the whole purpose of everything in chemistry. We want a lower energy. They want to be stable. So the lower the energy, the lower the energy, the more stable. So anytime a reaction occurs and a new substance is formed, it's forming because the bonds between that sub the elements in that substance creates a more stable environment. And when we do the Lewis structures, which is a whole other lecture, we will use brackets. So it will look like this when we do the Lewis structures. One thing that's important to notice is the lattice energy. It's the measurement of the energy of stabilization present in ionic solids. So in, a, in other words, how strong is our ionic bond? Here's an equation for the ionic substances. Will you necessarily be plugging numbers into this? No, but you should be able to qualitatively use this to determine whether an ionic bond is greater in one ionic compound versus another. What's important to notice is that the Q's up here represent the charge and the R's here is the ionic radii. So this is the charge and this is essentially the size of the ion. Let's use this here, which has a gra greater lattice energy. We have NaCl and KCl. NaCl this will be a plus one, this will be a minus one, this will also be a plus one, this will be a minus one. So the charge is not really going to affect anything here. If we had our Q1, Q2 over R plus plus R minus, this isn't going to matter because of the fact that the two compounds have the same charges. So what we need to look at here is the size of the ions. Well, chlorine 
will have the same size. So this R minus value will be the same for both. So instead we need to look at the R plus value. So look at the size of NA and K plus. NA plus and K plus. Sodium is higher in the periodic table than potassium. If you remember what happens as you go down a column, the ion gets bigger. And that's because of the fact that you're adding energy levels. So potassium is going to have a greater size. So we're going to have like this, this value over this R+. Plus. Well, with R plus being on the bottom of the equation, we know that that means the KCl will be weaker and this one will be greater. So what we can do with looking at this example is that if we are only comparing, here, we'll write it over here. If we are only looking at ion size, the larger the ion, the lower the energy or the weaker the bond. Let's take a look at NaCl, NaCl, which is a plus one, chlorine's a minus one. Here we have a plus two and a minus two. Here the charges are different. So we can look at the top, the Q1, Q2 over R plus plus R minus. So this number is going to dictate. Well, if we have a one and a one versus a two and a 2, this will be 4, this will be 1, the MGS will be greater. So with that, we can say the greater the charge, the higher the energy. You will have a few of these in your homework to use, and you're going to be just using qualitative look at it. We're not actually going to be putting numbers in. I use the numbers down here to support the qualitative understanding and to put together these little, I guess, rules. But most of the time you're just going to be looking at qualitative, which is a larger ion side, which is a greater charge, and go from there. Transition metals will typically form plus one, plus two, and plus three ions. They will lose from their S electrons, and then most electrons will be lost to end up with a filled or a half-filled subshell. 